I just say, why me, you know? That's what I ask myself, why me? Why did it happen to me? So everything's been good for us, and then something like this happens. And I think it's beyond a lot of people's comprehension that you just don't understand. I just think it's um, something that people don't expect to happen. This is Carla Yarborough. She and her husband own Spanky's Marsh Side in the resort town of Brunswick, Georgia. In August 2006, somebody hacked into their point of sale system. What happened in our case was we were hacked into and the magnetic data, which I didn't even know that we were storing um, in the hard drive, was um, taken and then new cards were made and sold over the internet. Carla didn't learn of the breach until February of the following year. So the criminals were in her system, freely taking personal information for nearly seven months, and Carla had no idea. It was very, um, I just felt like I had been blindsided by something because I just was not aware that that could even happen to me or to us. A similar well-publicized case made headlines in early 2006. The victim was TJX, a company that owns such stores as TJ Maxx and Marshalls. They too were hacked into, and customer information from about 45 million credit and debit cards was stolen. The PCI issue has really grown dramatically over the last several years. It's, it's a lot like having a business that's operating on a tiny little island in the Caribbean. The skies may be clear today, but at some point that big dark cloud's going to swoop over and here comes the biggest hurricane you've ever seen. The raging storm that is now known as PCI compliance is taking over the retail industry. We traveled the country to meet the major players in the PCI issue and get to the bottom of what must be done to fix this growing problem. It starts with the card brand, companies like Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. They are the first to learn if a breach has occurred. They look for common point of sale purchases on cards that report fraud. This is their way of learning exactly which businesses have been compromised. Next, the card brand notifies the acquiring bank, which is the middleman between the merchant and the card brand and is in charge of the actual transaction. Once the acquiring bank informs the merchant of the fraud, it can be a downward spiral of confusion and financial frustration. Visa has really taken a leadership role in the area of data security, and together with the other payment card brands, we created the Payment Card Industry Security Standards Council, which is uh, the owner of the PCI data security standards. Formed in 2004, PCI DSS is a list of industry tools and measurements to ensure safe handling of sensitive information. It consists of 12 requirements and multiple sub-requirements to guide the building and maintenance of secure payment networks. That's really what we're concerned about. We want to make sure that cardholder data is protected anywhere that it's stored, processed, or transmitted throughout the payment system. But what we're finding more and more frequently is that it's, it's compromises of full magnetic stripe data, which is uh, basically the data that's encoded within the magnetic stripe on the back of the card. The information on that magnetic stripe is what is often being stolen, and this information is a cash cow for criminals. Unfortunately, many retailers don't even know they're storing this information on their point-of-sale system. The information isn't needed after a transaction has been authorized. I think that when a compromise occurs, what, what merchants risk is the loss of trust of their customers, as well as the loss of the actual data that they may put at risk. This stolen data Data costs a lot of money. Not only is the merchant responsible for the fraudulent charges criminals make with these card numbers, Visa may find the merchant's acquiring bank because their customers weren't compliant in the first place. It's not a matter of if they're hacked, it's just a matter of when. Don Raber is with Chase Payment Tech, the largest acquiring bank in the world. As the middleman between merchants and card brands, acquiring banks are the first to receive any fines for non-compliancy. They normally pass these fines on to the merchant, but sometimes this is simply not possible. The hacker has taken, say, a million cards. That is going to easily grow into a very large sum from the standpoint of fines. Typically, Visa or MasterCard fine upward between $20 and $30 a card. If they can't pay it, then remember I mentioned earlier that Visa and MasterCard, they fine us first and we pass the fine on. If the, if the merchant can't, can't pay the fine, then we're left holding the bank. It's a huge financial risk for us. In Carly Arboro's case, her acquiring bank is making sure they avoid that risk by holding on to money that comes in from her credit card transactions. They can take money and hold it because they may be fined by Visa or MasterCard, and if they're fined by Visa or MasterCard, they don't want to have to take the risk of getting their money back from you, so they're going to keep it over there and make sure that they 
those fines are taken care of. As Carla sees less of a profit from her business, the next step she faces is a forensic audit. This is to determine just how long the criminals have been attempting to hack into the credit card information. The cost to Carla for this audit, $10,000. And we dig as deep as we can to try to piece that puzzle together. Nick Percoco is a forensic auditor with Spider Labs, a division of Ambrian Trust Wave, or ATW. Every day, he talks with confused merchants just like Carla. I really don't think when they swipe a card that a hacker can get into their system and steal that information. So it's, it's very a very new world for them. Nick says the smaller businesses are suffering in silence. Slowly but surely, some merchants are closing their doors and going out of business. Those small organizations, you never hear about. It, it's not going to make headlines on CNN that a mom and pop restaurant in the middle of South Dakota was hacked into. It's not going to happen. But the threat is very real. According to ATW, during each compromise, an average of 40,000 card numbers are stolen. If everybody in America just decided they're going to leave all their doors unlocked on their houses and they weren't, they're all going to go on vacation for three weeks, all the thieves in, the, in America would just drive around subdivisions just looting houses. That's really what the environment's like for these small merchants um, right now. Experts say these hackers are criminals who are a part of a sophisticated, organized group. On the systems they break into, they often leave an encryption to let other criminals know they've already been there. The message? Don't steal my work. Because of their cyber intelligence, these criminals are nearly impossible to catch. Nick Percoco says what they are actually doing is another story. It isn't sophisticated at all. What you see in Hollywood where it's somebody at a computer typing furiously trying to break in the systems, it's more of point and click hacking is, what, is really what it's come down to. Browse around just like you would sitting at your own computer, click on files, open them up, and download the data. It's, it's, it's actually that simple. Inside Spider Labs, Nick logs on to a criminal chat room to show just how simple the process is. The chat room reflects the same type of services you would find on eBay, but this is a marketplace for criminals to buy and sell stolen goods. These people here, you know, there's a username there, they said they have eGold, they have bank logins, they have fresh credit card numbers, they have, um, they have, they have a whole bunch of things that they actually have their hands on and are looking for someone who wants to buy them. It is sad because uh, it's like the small business person <laughs> is taking the brunt of the whole thing because somebody is out there breaking the law. We're having to pay for it one way or the other, if not by closing your doors, by having to pay out big sums of money. I didn't think I was at risk either, but I was, obviously, and it happened, and I thought that I had everything I needed because I had a brand new system and um, thought that my software was compliant. ATW learned that in nearly 60% of the cases where a merchant was compromised, reliance on an outdated version of a third party's products may have exposed the merchant system to theft. On our website, we have a list of validated payment applications that have demonstrated their ability to meet that standard, and that's something that we strongly encourage merchants to refer to and, and to select vendors that have been validated. As a merchant, there's one critical question you need to ask your dealer or reseller. Is my POS system PCI compliant? Buying and maintaining compliant equipment is the most important step toward compliancy. Is that when you buy a system, you can buy the Bentley, you can buy the Mercedes, you can buy the Cadillac, you can buy the Chevy, or you can buy the Yugo. So you may economize where you can least afford to do it. But the bigger companies have budgets for IT. The smaller people who don't have the funds to, to invest don't have the time to invest, are going to have a weaker system. You know, what bothers me is that here you have a small business, a, a restaurant, a small retailer, they're breached. They're being asked to pay millions of dollars because some criminal breached their system and stole this data. But the penalty's far too high. So I think legislation may be the ultimate goal. Right now, it's with the retailer. That's where the liability is being imposed. This matter grows more urgent by the day. Every time a criminal succeeds, the most valuable asset they steal isn't money, but trust. Yeah, upwards of 60% of, of consumers won't go back and shop at a place that's, that's breached their uh, credit card data. I think equally important, if you look at TJ Maxx, they lost more than a billion dollars in market cap immediately following the breach. Um, it says to me that you need to invest a little bit of money in this issue. Really the cost of protecting that data 
it's, it's a cost of doing business, it's essential, and it's far less than the cost in the event of a compromise. Now is the time to act. If you don't have money to upgrade your system or buy a compliant one today, work toward that goal. In the meantime, here is a list of action items you can do today. Make sure your POS system has a firewall if it has internet connectivity. Make sure patches are up to date. Antivirus software must be in place. Change passwords on a regular basis. If you don't need one to get on your system, create one and use it. Turn off remote access when it isn't needed. Stay educated. And most importantly, contact your POS provider to see exactly what you're storing on your system. Remember the saying, if you don't need it, don't store it. Well, I think you just um, don't have a choice. You can take the risk if you want to, but um, I'm just I'm sitting here as a witness to tell you that it can happen and, and the damages could be a, you know, far outweigh the cost of upgrading your system.